In 2022, Queen Elizabeth II celebrated her Platinum Jubilee. This celebration marked that she had spent an incredible 70 years on the British throne. This made her the longest reigning British monarch and head of state in history, smashing the record set by her great-great-grandmother Queen Victoria. Today, we will tell you about the top 10 things to know about the life of Queen Elizabeth II. Ten longest reigning monarch in British history. Elizabeth was the longest serving monarch in British history, surpassing even her great great grandmother Queen Victoria for the title in 2015. She came into power at the age of 25, following her father King George IV's death in 1952. Her coronation in 1953 was a national spectacle and was broadcast across the globe. During her reign, Elizabeth was served by 15 British Prime Ministers from Winston Churchill to Truss, and she met with 13 of the last 14 US presidents. Her teenage years were overshadowed by World War II, which she and her sister largely spent in the relative safety of Windsor Castle, west of London. She personified British strength and character long before she even knew she would be queen. In 1947, on her 21st birthday, then seen as the beginning of adulthood, she gave a now famous televised address on her first official overseas tour in South Africa. I declare before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service and to the service of our great imperial family to which we all belong, she said. There are few royal records she did not break. She was Britain's most traveled, oldest, longest reigning monarch. As head of the Commonwealth, the Queen has links with the past. Sometimes it's a past that's difficult to come to terms with because you think of empire, you think of colonial exploitation, for example. Royal author and broadcaster Richard Fitzwilliams told VOA. But so far as the Queen is concerned, you think of her dedication to the organization. As head of state, Queen Elizabeth II represented Britain in friendship with those who held in common the British values of freedom, equality, and democracy and with dignity she faced those who did not. She traveled to more than 100 countries and met countless prime ministers, presidents, kings and queens, hosting many of them in lavish state visits to London. 9. Homeschooling Like many royals of her time and before, Elizabeth never went to a public school and was never exposed to other students. Instead, she was educated at home with Margaret, her younger sister. Among those who taught her was her father, along with senior teacher at Eton College, several French and Belgian governesses who taught her French, and the Archbishop of Canterbury who taught her religion. Elizabeth's schooling also included learning to ride, swim, dance, and the study of fine art and music. During World War II, young Princess Elizabeth briefly became known as Second Subaltern Elizabeth Alexandra Mary Windsor of the Auxiliary Transport of Service No. 1. After months of campaigning for her parents' permission to do something for the war effort, the heir to the throne learned how to drive and service ambulances and trucks. She rose to the rank of honorary junior commander within months. Number 8. Number 230-873 During World War II, young Princess Elizabeth briefly became known as Number 230-873 Second Subaltern Elizabeth Alexandra Mary Windsor of the Auxiliary Transport Service Number 1. After months of campaigning for her parents' permission to do something for the war efforts, the heir to the throne learned how to drive and service ambulances and trucks. She rose to the rank of honorary junior commander within months. 7. Great Mimicker Elizabeth often gave the impression of a serious demeanor, and many have noted her poker face, but those who knew her described her as having a mischievous sense of humor and a talent for mimicry in private company. Rowan Williams, the former Archbishop of Canterbury, has said the Queen could be extremely funny in private, and not everybody appreciates how funny she can be. Bishop Michael Mann, the monarch's domestic chaplain, once said that the Queen imitating the Concord landing is one of the funniest things you could see. Ian Paisley, the northern Irish clergyman and politician, also noted that Elizabeth was a great mimicker of him. More recently, she showed her mischievous side during the Platinum Jubilee celebrations, when she starred in a comic video alongside an animated Paddington bear and spoke of hiding marmalade sandwiches in her purse. 6. Royal Taxpayer She may have been the queen, but she paid taxes too, at least since 1992. 
When Windsor Castle, the Queen's weekend residence, was ravaged by fire in 1992, the public rebelled against paying millions of pounds for repairs, but she voluntarily agreed to pay tax on her personal income. She said she would meet 70% of the cost of restoration work, and she also decided to open her home at Buckingham Palace to the public for the first time to generate extra funds from admission fees. 5. Little Lilibet The Queen was christened Elizabeth Alexandra Mary Windsor of York in honor of her mother, paternal grandmother, and paternal great-grandmother. But as a child, she was endearingly known as Young Lilibet by her family, said to be because she couldn't pronounce Elizabeth properly. In a letter to her grandmother, Queen Mary, the young princess wrote, Dear Granny, thank you very much for the lovely little jersey. We loved staying at Sandringham with you. I lost a top front tooth yesterday morning. Before signing off, love from Lilibet. The nickname became more widely known after Prince Harry and Meghan, Duchess of Sussex, named their daughter Lilibet Diana in 2021. 4. A Steadfast Romance Elizabeth and her husband, Prince Philip, enjoyed a stable relationship for more 70 years, a union that far outlasted the marriages of three of her four children, Charles, Anne, and Andrew. He has been quite simply my strength and stay all these years. The Queen said of Philip on their 50th wedding anniversary. Their story began in 1939 when Prince Philip of Greece, a handsome 18-year-old naval cadet, was detailed to entertain the 13-year-old Elizabeth for a day. Several years later, Philip was invited to join the royal family at Windsor Castle at Christmas, and he soon made discreet inquiries whether he would be considered an eligible suitor. The couple married in Westminster Abbey in 1947. When Philip died in 2021 at age 99, Elizabeth described his passing as leaving a huge void in her life, according to their son, Andrew. 3. Multiple Birthdays Elizabeth was born on April 21, 1926 but it was sometimes confusing for the public to know when to celebrate. There was no universally fixed day for her official birthday. It's either the first, second, or third Saturday in June, and was decided by the government. In Australia, her birthday was celebrated on the second Monday of June, while in Canada was marked on a Monday, either on or before May 24, Queen Victoria's birthday. Only the Queen and those closest to her celebrated her actual birthday in private gatherings. Two. A Queen and Her Corgis It is widely known that Elizabeth loved corgis. Princess Diana reportedly called the dogs the Queen's moving carpet because they accompanied her everywhere. She owned more than 30 corgis over the years. She also had two dorgies, crossbreeds of dachshunds and corgis, named Candy and Vulcan. Elizabeth's love for corgis began in 1933 when her father, King George IV, brought home a Pembroke Welsh corgi they named Dookie. Images of a young Elizabeth walking the dog outside their lavish London home would be the first among many to come over the decades. When she was 18, she was given another and named it Susan, the first in a long line of corgis to come. Later, there were dorgies, a dachshund and corgi crossbreed owned by the queen. Eventually, they came to accompany her in public appearances and became part of her persona. Throughout Elizabeth's 70 years on the throne, the corgis were by her side, accompanying her on official tours, reportedly sleeping in their own room at Buckingham Palace with daily sheet changes, and occasionally nipping the ankles of the odd visitor or royal family member. Three of them even appeared alongside the Queen as she climbed into James Bond's waiting helicopter in the spoof video that opened the 2012 Summer Olympics in London. 1. A Pretty Nice Girl the Queen inevitably became the subject of pop songs. The Beatles immortalized her with the tongue-in-cheek Her Majesty, calling her a pretty nice girl, though she doesn't have a lot to say. The brief song, sung by Paul McCartney and recorded in 1969, appeared at the end of the Abbey Road album. Other musical treatments weren't so kind. The Sex Pistols' anti-monarchist God Save the Queen, released right before her Silver Jubilee in 1977, was banned on British television. Do let us know in the comments if you like the Queen. Thanks for watching.